What's up guys, I'm Kel, Red Zone Rogue, and today I have some Rhea Cluster starter deck spoilers for you. I'm not going to beat around the bush too much, so let's just jump right in with the first J Ruler with Tagris Pearl Shine. We have the uh, Pimp Daddy Panda here. He's the Light Ruler slash J Ruler of the Light deck, obviously. He's a Ruler Panda. He has Judgment of two Light and one of any. He has Energize. And he has, at the beginning of the game, gain a gem of any attribute. So the gem is going to be like the surrounding theme and kind of newish mechanic for the uh, light deck. And the gems are basically kind of like tokens. They just kind of sit there, I believe. And they have a specific attribute. It's kind of like mana, you know, from Alhamont and all that stuff. And then he has some like weird shit at the bottom of his text box. It's kind of got like this crystal with some like... I don't know, Wingdings font after it. Apparently that's a sealed item ability and we're not gonna know what that does until later in the cluster. I think each ruler has this and they each have like a sealed item that we're gonna get later and it'll like release their ability or, or some shit. I honestly have no idea what the fuck that means. I don't know if these like sealed items are gonna be like regalia. They might be. But man, I really hope they're not. I fucking hope they're not like regalia. And if they are, Maybe make them not cost zero. That's all I ask. So, anyway, enough with that little tangent. Let's swap to his J Ruler side. Take Rest Pearl Shine, Lord of the Mountain. He's an 800 800 J Ruler Panda. When this card enters the field, gain two gems of any one attribute. So, they both have to be the same attribute. You can banish a light gem. This card gains 500 500 until end of turn. Play this ability only once per turn. That only once per turn thing's kind of like a. Man, I don't know, man. Uh, it's already not that, it's not not that strong, and you can only do it once per turn. But I mean, I get it. It's a starter deck ruler. It's meant for new players. I gotcha, I gotcha. Uh, it says banish a water gem. This card gains flying until end of turn, and then it tells you what flying does. And then it also has that weird wingding shit again. So both sides have the wingding shit, or the sealed item, or whatever the hell they're calling it. That's pretty cool. I'm really curious as to see what those are going to be. And yeah, that's uh, that's the J Ruler. Let's move on to some of the support cards. Um, I'm gonna be honest right now before we go over the support cards. I'm not super sold on this whole gem mechanic yet. It doesn't seem super strong, but you know I'll let you be the judge of that as we go over some of the cards. So next up we have the Ore from the Treasure Mountain. So this is the Magic Stone. You can treat this as a Light Magic Stone, so I guess that's good for resonance abilities. Uh, you can rest it to produce a light, and when this card enters the field, gain a light gem. Pretty standard. Uh, this deck comes with four of each of the cards I'm going to go over, so it comes with four of these. I guess it's going to be good for the, the the gem mechanic, so if that's a thing, then this is going to be good for that, I suppose. Next up, we have the Gem Trader. Pretty simple. He's a 300-300 for one of any. When this card is the field, you gain a light gem. So pretty close to the last one. Once again, if gems are a thing, then maybe this will be a thing. I like to point out, like, the fucking panda in the background. I, there's gonna be a lot of like doofy looking pandas. I'm not really sold on some of the pandas. There's one badass panda coming up, but some of the pandas are pretty doofy looking. Um, in, in, in an endearing way. Not uh, like a. I don't know. Anyway, let's, let's go on. So the next one is the White Raven. It's a 300 300 for one of any and flying. And it says when this card enters the field, you may banish a gem if you do draw a card. That seems pretty sweet. I, I do like this in terms of uh, this whole gem mechanic. 300-300 for f with flying for one. It's not too bad stats. And you get a draw card if you banish a gem. So, yeah, I think this card's going to be pretty good for the gem deck. And let's move on to the Gem Craftsman. Hello, girl. This is a 800-800 for two light and one of any Resonator, Resonator Human. When this card enters the field, gain a gem of any attribute. That's kind of cool. And this card gains plus 200, plus 200, as long as there are three or more different attributes among all gems you control. So she, like, produces a gem, and she's a 1,000, 1,000 for three. That's not too bad. I mean, the art is fantastic. She looks really cool. Uh, she reminds me of an Ishvalan from uh, Old Metal Alchemist. But other than that, uh, it's kind of cool, I guess, for the, the, the gem strat. You get to make a gem of any color, but just a, just kind of a big, big, dumb beater. It makes a gem, and then she's big. About it. Next up, we have the Gem Blade Onyx, and this guy's pretty good, I think. He's a 600-600 for one of any and one light. He's a Resonator Panda, and this card gains precision as long as you control a Darkness Gem. So the next couple cards are going to be kind of like this. So there's this guy. He's a super rare for whatever, whatever that means. It doesn't really mean anything because it's just in the starter deck. But 600 for 600 is two, and precision is pretty good for picking off some pesky targets. Next up we have the Gem Blade Sapphire, 600-600 for one of any and one light, so that's pretty good. Once again, 600-600 for two. 
Not too bad, and he gains flying as long as you control a water gem. 600, 600 flying for two. Pretty good with, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not much else to say. He's okay. It's not going to be like a, a huge meta-defining card or anything, but it's kind of cool. And then we also have the gem blade Ruby. She's an 800, 800 for two of any and a light. It's kind of got like this musketeer motif going on. I wish it was like panda slash musketeer. I think that would have been cool. Anyway, this card gains swiftness as long as you control a fire gem. So 800, 800 swiftness for three. That's okay. But I mean, fire has like better, better swiftness cards than that. But I mean, that's okay. Let's start that card. Not much else to say about this. Next up, we have the most badass of all the pandas. This guy is fucking awesome. I mean, just the way he looks. He looks so cool, and he's a pretty good card, too. So he's a 1,000-1,000 for three light and one of any. He's Diamond, the one-eyed treasury magician. He is a panda, obviously. Uh, whenever you gain a gem, resonators you control gain plus 200, plus 200 until end of turn. That's pretty cool. If you can generate multiple gems in a turn, you can buff your whole team and then just smash in for a lot of damage. I mean, this guy's going to be the linchpin of any, like, gem deck. He tops out at four. That's a lot. But anyway, he also has a pretty cool second ability. Uh, for two light, uh, target J resonator you control gains barrier until end of turn. That's super sweet. You can just give any of your dudes barrier, including your J ruler. I mean, that's awesome. I love this guy. Diamond is an excellent, probably the best card in this whole starter deck. So, yeah, let's move on. We got Jewel Burst <laughs> as an additional cost to play this card. Banish two gems. It costs two light. Uh, remove target resonator from the game. So you got to sack two gems to remove a dude. That's not very good in all honesty. And it doesn't even have quick cast. I mean, I, I like the flavor. He's just fucking throwing gems at people. Just suck on these gems. Um, I don't know, man. It's an okay card. For for light removal, it's fine, but it's no stoning to death. It's no heteroclite Excalibur. I mean, I, I figured in the, in the gem deck, you're probably not going to be wanting to get rid of your gems all too much, but may maybe you are. Maybe you're going to end up with a shitload of them, and this is going to be the way to, like, sack them, I, I suppose. Next up, we have the Jewel Shield. Uh, this is a chant quick cast for one light. Um, and it says target resonator gains 0 plus 200 till end of turn, gain a gem of any attribute, then that resonator gains plus 0 plus 100 for each different attribute among, among all gems you control. So, not a great card. Just a purely defensive card for blocking and stuff like that. It's okay. It does generate a gem, so that, that's kind of cool, I guess, for the whole, like, gem strategy. And it's kind of a counterpart to the next card, the Jewel Sword and... I love the art on this. Look at his fucking face. He's just like the, the cheeky, like gritted teeth face. Ah, it's awesome. Anyway, so it is a chant quick cast, basically the opposite of the jewel shield. Um, the resonator gains plus 200 plus zero, or plus 200 slash zero until end of turn instead of, you know, zero slash 200. Uh, you gain a gem of any attribute, and then it gets an additional plus 100 plus zero for each different attribute among all gems you control. This is definitely better than the jewel shield. Um, it does generate a gem, so that's worthy of note. And overall, I think it's okay for like a gem deck. I think it's gonna be pretty good and an easy way of generating gems. Like combine this with that diamond dude who buffs your whole team plus 200, because you can make a, whenever you make a gem, because this makes a gem at uh, quick cast speed. So that, that's pretty sweet. So you can do this, pump up a dude, give all your dudes plus 200, plus 200. I mean, that, that's kind of cool. I think you can do some kind of kind of cool things like that if you have that going. I wish that diamond, ability that pumps your whole team. I wish that was on the, the ruler, but ah well. And the final preview for today is just this light magic stone art that's going to be in the new starter deck. It looks pretty cool. Got this angel or maybe she's a harpy or something. Um, I really like this artist. I think this is a fantastic piece of art. And there's not much else to say. It's just a light magic stone. And there you have it guys. That is the first of the Rhea cluster starter decks. The Tagris Pearl Shrine. Pimp Daddy Panda deck. I think it's kind of cool that they're going with a new mechanic, and I wonder if every single starter deck will have kind of this newish mechanic going with it. Um, we're gonna wait and see. This was actually my least anticipated starter deck. I know a lot of people were like really looking forward to the panda, but it kind of wasn't so much. I'm really looking forward to the vampires, maybe the dragonoids, and maybe whatever the elemental means for the, the wind deck. That sounds kind of cool, so. Yeah, guys, um, I will continue to do these as the spoiler season rolls out. Hope you guys liked the video. Let me know your thoughts on the Panda Man and the gem mechanic. I think they're interesting. I don't think they're going to be super competitive. 
but I think they're kind of cool. I'm definitely going to play around with it a little bit. Um, probably just going to battle all the, the starter decks uh, when I get them, but yeah, guys. If you liked the video, then leave a like, subscribe, comment, all that good shit, regardless of what you do. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time. Have a good one all, and I will see you later.